This is a video about using the show editor in QLC+. Now in the instruction manual they talk about using the show editor to create a lighting timeline that would align with audio cues. So the idea is here is if you have an audio track and you need to precisely align light cues with audio cues in that track that you can use this feature of QLC Plus to do that. Now I have to make a disclaimer here. I never use the show editor to do that. My preference is to use some show control software that plays back audio cues and then have that show control software send signals to QLC Plus to change lighting cues. That seems to be much more precise. First of all, you need to start creating a show here. So you click on the icon up here and I'm just going to call this demo. So now we've created a show and you'll see that this X turns green now that we can add tracks to this. So I'm going to click add track and just say click create a new track and I create a new track one. So now they talk about creating sequences here. Um, you can use video audio. I do not recommend using the audio in here and then trying to sync, uh, sync to it. My experience has been that the audio playback is very unreliable. It will play back, but the timing is inconsistent. I would do the audio playback with another piece of software and then just create your lighting timeline here and then you can use the audio software to start this and have it line up. Okay, so anyway, let's get some lighting in here. I'm going to click on the sequence button. When I click on the sequence button, it gives me a choice. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to be using my front of house lights in this particular sequence. I'm going to go to all fixtures. I recommend when you're doing this, use the all fixtures and not the channels groups. The channels groups thing's been somewhat glitchy for me. So what we do is we add a step and then we determine what lights are going to be on during that step. So I'm going to say front of house one comes on. I add another step. I add front of house two. I add another step. I add front of house three. I add another step and I add front of house four. So as I click through here, you can see how I'm adding lights to the various steps. There's no timing. I'm just to make this quick, I'm going to go common and just say that I want this a one second duration. Notice when I clicked on duration, now this opens it up to be four seconds long, this particular sequence. So we've actually created a sequence with the front of house lights here. I can see what the steps look like. The best way to take a look at this, again, I found that when I bring up the DMX monitor, it doesn't accurately reflect. As you can see as I'm clicking through there, this accurately reflects what's going on. The DMX monitor does not. It's sticking with, DMX monitor is sticking with my last set of sliders that I moved, which is where I moved all four up. And just a little caution here too. Be careful when you're on steps. If you move things up, you may actually accidentally edit that step. So if I'm on this step and I move some sliders over here, I can accidentally edit this step. The best way to take a look and see if this is doing what you want to do is click in the gray area. I'm going to click stop. It takes us back to the beginning. I'll click play and we can see what's actually happening here. One, two, three, four. Okay. If I go back and I click edit now, I can go back in and edit and adjust faders or adjust timing at this point. All right. Now, let's say that I want to go back to my timeline here. And I want to put in using these same lights that I used for this sequence. And this is another feature of this um, show editor. I'm basically in this first track just going to be controlling my front of house lights. You can force other lights into the setup later, but then it kind of messes up everything back here and you'll find yourself going in and correcting. So you kind of have to have a plan ahead of time what lights you want to use on what tracks. Otherwise, this gets kind of very confusing and you get unexpected results. But anyway, if I click at the five second spot here and say I want to create another sequence, notice that it brings up the same four lights. It doesn't give me a, uh, a choice of lights. So this time I'm going to use the same four lights, but I'm going to do backwards. Notice that it brought up the last setting that I used. So I'm going to pull these three out and I just want this light on. I'm going to add another step. And I'll add my second light. I'm going to add another set step, add this light, I'm going to add another step and I'll add this light. Let me adjust my timing. I'm going to put it in at one second. Everything else is common. 
So now I've created this effect. If I start here, if you watch the monitor, I'm going from right to left. Okay, so now one of the things I wish they had is that if you're working in programs that deal with timelines like sound programs or video programs, when you take one element and bump it up again another, oftentimes it will snap and close the gap. We don't have that here. You do have a grid, so if the end of this is exactly at four seconds, then I can slide this over and it will snap grid-wise right into place so that when I play this, I won't have any gaps in here in the lighting. I'll get my one, two, three, four, and then it'll go one, two, three, four back the other way. But let's say we had something a little more complicated and my lighting, so my first sequence here, and if I click on it, say that this uh, not this needs to be not four seconds long, but 4.7 seconds long. So you select this item, click on this clock up here, and I would change the duration to 4 seconds and 700 milliseconds. Notice how it automatically expanded this and adjusted the sequence of lights, which is kind of a neat thing too. If you need to do that, I didn't have to individually go in. So it is quicker in this fashion. And I'll close that up now. And if I bounce back and forth here, notice I had to go off and come back. Now it's changed the whole time to 1 second and 1 second and 175 milliseconds. So in that respect, it's going to save you a lot of time. If you want to do, you know, if I had to figure this out mathematically, it would have taken a lot longer, but I've just, in, I've lengthened the whole sequence. So again, this might be helpful if you've got something in mind you want to do. My difficulty now, though, is lining this up with this so that there's no gap at the end. If I do this, I'm going to have an overlap, and if I do this, I'm going to have a gap in here where no lights will come on. So it's a little bit tricky. If I know exactly where the end of this sequence is, and I could try to do that, um, because this is the first sequence here, I can click, click and know that this is 4 seconds and 700 milliseconds long. So then I can click over here, and I can set this one to begin at 4 seconds and 701 milliseconds, and that way we'd be positioned perfectly. So now when I click back and I watch, watch what happens here, we shouldn't have any gaps. So that works well. Okay, the problem with that is then if you get another sequence here, then you have to figure out, okay, um, then you have to start doing math. That, you know, this one is 4, uh, four seconds and 700 milliseconds. Uh, this one is, let's see what the duration is for this one, is exactly 4. So then your next one has to come in at 8 seconds and 701 milliseconds or something like that. So you have to start doing mathematics. So I wish there was a way that you could make these snap to each other, especially when you have odd times, but there is no way to do that. Another caution in here when you're using this too. So if I'm working on this particular sequence and I bring up my clock, it shows me that this starts at zero and it's four seconds and 700 milliseconds long. Now I would expect when I click on this block that it would jump over, but no, it's still showing me the timing for this block over here. So you basically have to close this and then open it again. Now it will show me the timing for this block that start time is six seconds and 500 milliseconds and its duration is four seconds long. So again, again, kind of a, a buggy thing and you have to be aware of when you're doing that and moving that. And again, the overlap can sometimes cause you some issues. Now, let's say I want to take, and I'll show you that with another example here. Let's say I can take a sequence I've already created in my functions menu and add it to a track. Um, again, somewhat a little bit glitchy here. You're supposed to be able to click uh, select a new track and then just add it from there, but my experience has been that you have to do this. You have to do this and say, create a new track first, which will create track two. Now select track two and say that you want to add something to track two, and I can say I can add my color chase to track two, and it'll come up there. And there's my color chase. So now when I play this back, and my color chase, you'll see just goes red, green, blue. Uh, and the problem with that is, 
And by the way, this is kind of a neat feature here. If I want to just look at certain lighting, then this is helpful too. I can mute this particular track so that the lighting won't come up. And I can just look at my color chase track if I so choose to do that. So this time you see playback, it'll just show me my color chase. But to give you an example about this, so say I do this and I want to make a copy of this. So I'll do I'll do this, make a copy of that, and say I want to, I'll just paste it here for the time being, my color chase, so I have two separate color chases. If I slide this back and they overlap, remember I had red here and blue here, so red and blue makes pink. If I overlap this a little bit, you're going to see what happens is that I get, you'll see red, green, blue, and then it'll go to pink, and then it'll come out of there because of the overlap. And if you watch on my monitor here, you'll see that happening. All right, so you can see what I mean by that particular thing happening. So again, I wish they had a snap function where you could snap these together. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of positioning. And, and see what you can do there, but you still may find it useful to do that. I'll unmute this so then both tracks will play. And um, you can progress from there and then build your show from there. Now, once you've created this, if you look back at your functions menu, once you've got done and you've created your whole time show, and this can only run forward, of course, then if you look back at your functions menu, you will actually see that there are sequences in here that we've created by doing this show and there is a show called demo. You can actually include this demo show as a part of your queue structure. So say you're running a show um, and in your virtual console you have a queue list like this in your virtual console. You could add normal queues like um, scene one, scene two, and then you could actually add in this demo show at some point and it would actually run that demo show. This doesn't have to exist by itself. It can be part of an overall queue structure. So that's a possibility too. If you were doing a general theatrical show where you had general light cues, but there, there's some point in the show where you want to run like a time structure that may be like a, a one minute sequence, you could possibly use this to create the sequence and then add that show into your queue structure and it'll actually play that back for you. This may be a little bit glitchy, but you may find something in here that may help you to create your production.